All right, my name is Ben Brown. I am making these videos because I'm trying to recreate my online space for my podcast, Hang Out With Musicians. I'm trying to recreate that space so it's something that's that's actually mine. I want to be completely sovereign and, and have my own thing. I don't want to be stretched out and beholden to all these different digital superpowers. And I'm doing that by leveraging everything possible on Urbit. Right now, today, I've gone over HTML and CSS and that which won't be used, JavaScript. I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash brbenji, where support helps me make the podcast. Patrons will get some perks that we'll work on as we're working on this stuff. Half of what's given to me will go to my favorite charity, Give Directly, which gives money to the poorest people in the world, simply just handing them money so they can solve their money problems. Handing people money really does change people's lives. I know I've benefited from unconditional money in my life. There's gonna be a whole lot of these videos. I don't actually know when they're gonna stop, start. I don't know exactly how they'll be shaped, but enjoy. And yar. <laughs> This is gonna be like min IO focused video for a new home. Spring break edition. Good morning. I don't have any coffee or tea or anything. It's a nice day, or it was like kind of chill right here at the top of the spring break. And the little gray skies. Looks like it's kind of bluer out there. Where we left off was I had just done a rundown of what the app should do, talked about some of the easy toolings for making the different website y stuff. Now I have to explain one kind of advanced thing so that I can dive in and change what I need to change and get one step closer to making it so that if I was to give you an RSS feed at the end of this video, you would actually be able to play the podcast. <laughs> The key to this is going to be this min.io thing, localhost slash home. So over here is just text. So there's no, no images, no audio, nothing like that. And I want to change that. Right now there's kind of a limit to the size of a file that you can put inside of your Urbit. You could put in like an image, you could put in like a little thing of audio, like my, um, is that a focus here? The audio that's in here, this audio, is actually inside the Urbit. They're like little tiny snippets. If you're gonna do something a lot bigger, like a podcast or a whole bunch of images or something, there's a limit to how much an Urbit can currently serve as a file. Like you can't be watching your Shrek movies just yet. There's a, a, a way around it, and that's what we'll get into here. And it's through a thing called Min.io. You have your Urbit, and you want to like deliver like a big old, big old file. Currently, it's hard to have that file inside the Urbit, like a movie or something. So currently, right next to the Urbit, you can set up this thing called Min.io on the side. A lot of times they call it a, a bucket, so we'll just draw a bucket. And in the bucket, you're going to put your uh, the heavy anvil -y things. And so if you can't put a big file in your Urbit, then you can put in a thing that can serve up that big file just next to the Urbit. That's the situation that I currently got. For me, it's up in the cloud. It could totally be on your computer as long as you're willing to have your computer on all the time and connected to the internet. This stuff is annoying, admin, internet, network. This is the stuff that a normal person just doesn't do. When it's all on your Urbit, when it's all coming out of it, like that's when this is going to actually be pretty fun to do. <laughs> but currently I've got a, we got what we got. I have set that up. It is, it is a pain. It's a pain to set up. And I gave it its own URL, console.s3. Yeah. Okay. And to log in, use your password, because yeah, literally you could look that up. You can see some of my uh, my buckets here. You know, filter buckets, right? This min.io is something where it's mine. Like I I've set it up. You could, you know, use an S3 bucket service somewhere else. I could lie, see you like it like that, like it like that. Let me just show that in like um, a little, in a fake little chat scenario here. Nordis Mockwell slash home. I'm going to, I want to share a fun thing like, uh, hey, I made this GIF 
Or no, even better. Oh yeah, I made this GIF. Blip my ride. <laughs> Going straight to DVD. There we go. So I was able to grab an image from my computer, kind of tunnel it through the Urbit, and the Urbit coordinated having the right credentials to put it up on the S3 bucket. We'll call it a bucket, my big file bucket. And uh, if we take a look at the source, it is my S3 bucket, uploads, Norse Markwell, and then you get the, the image. Let's see if we can see it in the console here. Now we have uploads, Minio, Armentown. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Blip my ride. Today, that just happened. So now it's in there. It wasn't in there before, and the, the Urbit handled that. And so that's generally how, if you wanted to pass along anything that's more than just text, that's generally how you've had to do it in the Urbit, Urbit land. In like your front page, this thing is called landscape. Under your profile, you would have remote storage. And then you'd get to see all this secret information that you shouldn't see. But yeah, I point it to where it should go. I give it all its access things. This 100% needs to get blurred out. And it's got like, yeah, the bucket name and whatnot. Okay, that's something that Urbit has been using and kind of relying on. It's like almost a little bit of a crutch. I know like sometimes it's used to dismiss Urbit and whatnot. That's changing this year with a project called Ares. If you're technical, it's a new a new runtime. The way that it sees things, you'll be able to create arbitrarily large files. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. So in a similar way as dropping in images you want to send to people in messages, I want to do the exact same thing with the assets of the podcast. Oh, did I already do this? Oh, shoot. Well, look at that. All right. Hey, I was looking out for myself. Surprise, surprise. Let's start with pics. <laughs> Here we go. I've got things like, uh, I've got myself. Great. I'll do this profile, Dan Web P. I have the home of my S3 bucket, art slash asset slash X Dan Web P. And look at that. We got it. Great. So we should be able to just take in a URL path like that and slap these things on. Let's give that a shot. That's going to be digging into our sale, which becomes the HTML, and plugging it into those images. I think usually the caffeine would be kicking in at this point. I'd be getting getting hyper. Uh, the app, I got the site, the sale. Here we go. We'll go to the guide. All right. I think, look, it's so simple. Wait, no, that's simple. This is more simple. You don't even have to write the word source image at give me that Dan profile. All right, we'll commit home. And let's see, bingo. Actually, dang, that's so consistent. I could almost uh, almost like plug in their names in a, in a different kind of way. I actually have the musician's names here. If that matches the URL, I could uh, streamline this. I think that's what I want. Close it out because it's a list of things. Now it can be image at. Well, it's in pics. Do Dan dot web. Do, do, do. Oh, okay. Oh, that's it. I didn't close it. Yep. Got to be something simple. Got to be something simple. This should be a crazy amount of dance, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dan's all the way down. <laughs> Thank you for your good work, Dan. <laughs> So if I have permission to do that, he had a really fun episode. Hopefully you'll be able to listen to it. But yeah, for this to work, I need this Dan part to be pulled out and this musician part. So in that case, what am I going to get? I'm going to get one of these, these slashes. Let's take a look at what that means. If I do a Dan slash, then I have that. Is that like, is that really acceptable? Is that fine? That feels like I'm cheating. Well, so we'll take this addition got here. We'll take the head of this thing. We're going to trip it because of that. Then we can do, I mean, honestly, at this point, it feels like I should just slash pick slash profile dash. Weld that with muse, their name. And then I will end up welding WP there. I think that's how that go. Would you look at that? Now we've got images. Fancy, dancy. All right. I guess I'm going to call it there. I don't think there's enough for an episode. Good morning.
I've got some coffee today. We got our favorite kind of coffee. You never know what's at, in Costco, what's going to be there. And we finally got back to our good stuff, our real good stuff. And I'm back on coffee. So, so exciting. Good morning. It's early. Right now, everything is, is damp and rainy. I actually see a little bit of uh, blue, which is um, hasn't been typical of the skies recently because we've had like thunderstorms with showers. It just... <laughs> Just the other night, it was like, that was all there was. It's just lightning and thunder and water just pouring down, waking us up in the middle of the night. I don't know if I told you about Penelope having to get surgery, but she's finally, she's finally like recovered of that. We got the stitches out and she's, she's back to her, back to her old self, just with a few extra little scars and a lot of like uh, shaved down pieces of her fur, but that's going well. Boop, boom, boom, boop. Today, I wanted to continue making the home base website. I've already loaded up the comment, and would you look at that? Now we have inserted images inside of the website to go to the S3 bucket and pull it in. What's next? What's the what's the thing for us to do? There's a couple different directions we can go. We can try to get the podcast things available. At this point, I started looking at it and I was like, you know what, I want to already be thinking about style. I want to already be thinking about grouping these images in such a way that's attractive, takes up a lot smaller pieces of the real estate. I wanted to keep it really simple, mobile first and whatnot. And so this past week, which was spring break, I ended up doing a lot of, like, it's not exactly like research. Like I know how CSS goes, but like I did a deeper dive into CSS to figure out what approach I wanted to take for styling because I know a little bit about what's going on, but you know, I don't know. I, I search, I click through things. I like, I know there's people that know more than me. And so I've, I've, I've looked into different stuff. So this is my little mock-up here, you know, a little title and our couch. These should be the individual images divided by season. I think sooner than later, I would want Patreon and even like give directly pump here because ultimately that's kind of, that's the high value thing, right? Like I want people to, to really know that the, the Patreon is there and that's, that's what makes things happen. Optional email submission, subscription thing, and then a continuation of seasons and then like a little footer thing. So I got this big, big old, long mobile mobile app thingy thing. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, this will do. When you click on any of the images for the musicians, a little HTML will be inserted in between these suckers, just below it. It'll gray out everything else. The title of the podcast, I usually write this like little three line poem, then links out to what the musician is doing, and then an ability to go over to that podcast episode and listen will be there. If you look at it, like, how am I going to get this thing to where it's like centered down the page? How am I going to get these images to group together? How am I going to get that to shape up a little bit better? We know how the HTML is set up, this nested thing. Everything is just going to be stacked on top of each other. If I didn't center it, it would just start on the left and then you just stack every every new thing. What we need to do is we need to figure out how to group these things together, ask for a different kind of style, a different kind of rule for those groupings. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. Let's see. Yeah, there's different schools of thought for CSS. If you go to your Urbit, I'm going to go to localhost sig debug, squiggly debug. This is actually, this is really neat. Uh, not everybody knows that this is here. And you can do things like look at what URLs you have. This star represents localhost or whatever your URL is. And then things like, you know, debug is an option. Things like try and name and log out, log in. It also tells you what what app or agent you have connected. So URL home goes to the home app. This allows you to look at things that are happening to your ship and you get to do it through the browser at a distance. It's great. Let's notice something. Look at how it's like responsively looking. I, I really like, I like this box that's happening. I like the boxes inside the boxes. So whenever I find something that I think really works, I 
can't help but kind of dig in a little bit. So let's take a look. You can click on this little guy right there, the little dots, like almost like a selector thing. And then now your mouse kind of like searching stuff. Let's look at this. The tag is div, we have a div tag from here to here, div. We get that HTML tag. We also have, if you notice this class, it's got things like BN, BRM, BRL. This is a certain, a certain way of styling things. It's called utility first CSS. So like if I dig this, I dig it. And a lot of times what I'll end up doing is I'll end up going to the CSS file. Then you get to see what this person was working with. What was the, what did they choose to do? This will make sense for what we know from CSS. You select a tag and then you add property in the value that you want. And so HTML is a tag that we know and body. These are all just tags. Things can get a little bit more complicated. So dot something something means I'm going to make something myself. Here's a little custom thing. And I'm going to be able to give a name to these, maybe like a collection of tags, or I'm going to create a certain class of tag. If I give them this class, then you can use that label, that class label to select it and then add these changes as I would like. The so class B dash dash red one. If I add that, then insert this into its style. Let's go big. Let's say this one. Notice class here. I'm going to come in here and do B dash dash red one. And we'll get nothing. Does it even have a border? Well, there we go. <laughs> now everything also has a border. And now it's our nice, lovely red one color. Cool. Neat. <laughs> so there's two things that I put the B red one class on. And then now that I've modified the class, it goes in and adjusts it. What's going on here? Like, what is the choice that's occurring for styling here? Well, the choice is to have this large library of classes. Instead of having to think about everything that I want to do, I can just know this library really well. And you can stack these things just on the class. I looked into that and I, I kind of thought that maybe I would uh, go down that route. Smarter people than me doing that kind of thing. That is an optional way of doing things. That is called utility first CSS. I've been going for an hour and a half. What is utility first CSS? This is a great article. I didn't realize it was recent this year. This lovely is all get out website is the mobile view. Make it silly big. This thing has a lot going on. That's very, very pleasant. Yeah, this kind of goes and explains like, okay, what the heck is going on? Why? Why are we adding all these things to CSS? And ultimately, he's just making an argument for CSS is the right tool. It's just the right tool. There's something about CSS that's like really freaking people out. I think because it like it seems simple, but it just kind of messes with you. Here's what CSS is all about. I just want to make a box of all these things. Why do these things spread out? Styling with CSS ends up feeling like <laughs> where it's just like coat after coat after style. If you know it at all, like this is what ends up happening. I'm like moving this thing over and then expanding it a little bit and then like reversing some of the things and then now I've got to where I want it to be. That's what CSS can feel like. Just like kind of scares people, but I don't think it's, I don't think CSS is that scary. That is what this kind of argues. <laughs> I should just be building things. So this guy who's like making that argument, he has this thing called every layout, every layout dev. Just yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Let me just get his name out here. Hayden Pickering. And there's Andy Bell, who's a part of it. I think he probably reigned in Hayden. Hayden's kind of just like a crazy mad genius. If I was to like summarize every layout, it's that CSS was a tool that was made to style HTML. It's also hyper aware of the nesting fact. So there's actually these things that are afforded to CSS to move about that nesting so that you can make some really smart choices about how to style something. You just kind of know what's going on and every layout kind of explains what's going on. Let's talk this through for a second. When we're trying to make a front end, we're working with HTML and we're trying to style it with CSS, like what's the medium that we're working with? Guess what? As expansive and amazing as you think web applications are, 
the main thing that the web browser is doing is giving you text to portray information. One way that I've been thinking about it is it's a simulation of paper, but better than just paper, everything gets to be a lot more dynamic. So it's like this dynamic piece of paper. The things that are dynamic are, how big is this piece of paper? How zoomed in are you? Here's one of the biggest problems with making a web page look exactly how you want it to look, is the font size isn't controlled by you. In this world where the font size is dynamic, the size of the piece of paper is dynamic, how are you going to get across whatever look that you want? There we go. Now I've got myself a nice little grid. Let's take a look at what he's got here. I'm like totally gonna buy these things and look at it eventually. I just need money. <laughs> Let's see, for me to get $69 to pay for this, I'm gonna need to give $69 to give directly, right? So I'll need patrons or some donations to equal, you can just do 70, $140. I'm cheap, man. I'm just super cheap. I've done everything without paying for stuff. I've done all of the non-paying, so that's a thing. All right, so what do we got here? So I've got a grid layout, there is Inside the grid, every child of the grid layout is a center layout. The center layout is made up of a link that wraps the whole thing. Inside that link, you have a stack. Inside the stack, you have the image, the header too. This is pretty interesting. This is actually what I'm getting at. He creates these simple rules where like the stack layout has a rule. Now this stack layout is going to be embedded inside of a center layout. Here's the center here. And that is going to be inserted as the children for the grid layout. And instead of like writing every single page to look exactly how he wants, he just knows how to make these things flexible no matter what the dynamic piece of paper or the dynamic font is doing. And they also can like nest as layouts. Like it goes, can go all the way down. That's cool. Like, I mean, these are the components, right? The great little... Great little components. That's very good. I like that very much. Yeah, we got some things going. Awesome. Look at that. That is a is a, is a grid here. That is working out. All right, cool. Now we're mixing everything that we're stealing with the what we do. So you know, nothing's ever gone wrong with that. Cool. That's. I mean, that's the behavior that I want right there. All right, I gotta go. <laughs> kind of got somewhere. I'm gonna dissect what uh, every layout is doing. Of course, it'd be faster if I just would buy it. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going on this. I'll just do this my on my own time, and I'll I'll catch you up. I can probably do some screen recordings and then splice those in as I need to, so I don't have to do this whole rigmarole. But yeah, I'm gonna keep on tweaking the CSS, massaging this style to make it what I want, but without like biting myself in the butt. You know, at this point, you know. Maybe it would have been faster if I was using utility classes. I just like have things where they want to be. But I always like learning things the hard way and actually understanding it. Yar. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.